Welcome to the exclusive world of BPI Preferred, where you are taken care of financially, no matter your preference. You have a relationship manager that knows you and gives you personalized service with priority handling, even over the phone. We introduce you to a diverse range of privileged experiences. Feel the care. Feel the privilege. BPI Preferred. What if your everyday is easier? What if your tasks are faster? What if you never have to chase due dates ever? What if your life is safer? What if your dreams are higher? What if kaya mo na? Gcash gives you secure payments, real-time money transfers, accessible financial services, exclusive deals, and a full suite of business solutions para kaya mo na sumabay sa takbo ng buhay. Kaya mo na to stay connected. Kaya mo na magbuy at anytime, anywhere. Kaya mo na magbuy and sell. Kaya mo na to get exclusive deals. Kaya mo na magpera padala. Kaya mo na going safe on future. Kaya mo na abutin ang pangarap. Kaya mo na makatulong, magbigay ng pag-asa. Kaya mo Gcash mo. Sa pagpatak ng ulan, sa pagsubok na dumaraan, may tapang kang harap, lilipat kang may pangarap. Lilipat kang may pangarap.
Nasa bahay ka lang. Gamit ang iyong Show My King online franchise business. Step 1, you post. Step 2, we deliver. Step 3, you earn. Tandaan, sa Show My King lang yan. QC is pro-business. In QC, we promote. We provide. And we protect businesses. The location of choice for investors and entrepreneurs. Hello, welcome to today's Business World one-on-one -on -one interview. This time with a front runner in the drive to improve and expand internet connectivity across the country. Converge ICT Solutions was founded in 2007 as a challenger brand, to quote from its report, to provide end-to-end -end high speed, pure fiber internet service that will boost user experience at an affordable price. It listed on the Philippine Stock Exchange in October last year and now forms part of the 30 stock PSE index and also of two FTSE indices. It has seen surges in subscribers, financial metrics, and stock price less than a year after it listed. Joining us today on how the current crisis has shaped his business and even his management style is Converge Founder and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Dennis Anthony Uy. Welcome to this interview, Mr. Uy. Thank you for having me here in this interview. Uh, thank you, Willie. Yes, well, let's start with this. Um, first of all, how important was it for you to see Converge included in the PSE index and in the FTSE indices this early? Actually, we are sudden uh, surprise also, no? It's in span of the, the 12, uh, less than 12 months in trading, no? So mm -hmm. I think this is uh, give us a uh, more uh, uh, confidence. And uh, with, we, uh, we, we, with the less than 12 months of the uh, trading, we, we, we did this uh, inclusive, inclusive. We're so happy. And uh, our investors should be happy also because of what we did is it's not easy in, in the journey of less than a year, our stock growing almost close to 70 to 80% as of today. So yeah. it's quite uh, attractive. Yeah. Well, uh, Converge has seen, uh, as I said, a continued surge in subscribers and financials, uh, riding on growing demand for data as this crisis continues. Uh, how was Converge able to scale up with this sudden surge in demand? And what were the main challenges and how did you address them? You know, all of this is the uh, uh, plan ahead. Oh. I have been in this business uh, more than 30, uh, three decades already. No? So for me, is uh, technology uh, bring to the uh, our Filipino consumer is very important. No? This is, we, we built this 2016. No? It's just new. No? Uh, this uh, plan ahead and uh, bring high technology and future proof for our uh, Filipino consumer. And uh, this is, uh, we can say, uh, we just uh, finished the whole uh, Luzon and we're reaching already besides Mindanao. And uh, I'm happy to tell uh, our consumer, and this is the really newest and uh, newest and latest of the technology right now, digital uh, highway to able to connect to individual homes on the future. So this is the basic, uh, I think, uh, 
uh, answer to what we have today, and because of uh, we 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 chosen and the right technology to able to have this proper business growth as of today. Yeah. Well, you did mention that uh, you've begun your foray into the Visayas in Mindanao. Um, uh, for this semester, can you can you just talk more about this plan for for the next six months? Like, how many cities and municipalities do you plan to cover in this second half? I think as of today, we are reaching four hundred towns and cities already throughout the country. You know, the whole uh, Luzon uh, we covered, uh, but. Uh, the major because where you build the backbone and where is the uh, market we are top immediately for the besides Mindanao next six months we actually we operating already in Cebu and we are quite uh, uh, happy to, to take up and this is a quite strong sign that people are really uh, hungry for a better and uh, and uh, right uh, technology uh, looking uh, better uh, stable and reliable uh, uh, internet connection. No? We have already uh, some in Mindanao. Uh, we have some pilot already in Dabao. And mm -hmm. uh, I think coming uh, six months, the major cities of uh, besides Mindanao, we are partially open up little by little, but uh, we will go on deep the next uh, coming uh, years because you cannot do this infrastructure overnight. We need to build slowly and we will identify where the market is. And hopefully by uh, 2025, uh, my aspiration is we might uh, reaching the 55% of the household, the entire country to able to, uh, this is home pass, to able to bring uh, the high speed uh, uh, internet to our individual uh, Kababayans. Yeah. That's right, that's for 2025. Uh, but uh, what are your performance targets for this year and also for 2022 the our performance target this year we we might hit in close to 1.7 million subscriber mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. our growth this year compared last year is almost double uh, mm -hmm. in fact uh, you can see the the size uh, we are our 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 base is not really big no but uh, we are we are high growth company and we can see the growth of uh, our customer uh, base is uh, double every year. In fact, uh, the revenue is also close over double the uh, triple for the first quarter almost. And uh, my mm -hmm. second quarter, we're hitting the same uh, number. Yeah. You have a profit guidance for this year? The gross revenue, I think we might hit in close to 25 to 26 billion and our EBITDA is almost hitting high, almost 55%. No? First half of the year, our net profit is hitting 3.2 billion uh, net after, uh, after tax. No, So mm -hmm. if you double it, easily we can get six and a half to seven billion this year. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we, we all see that you're riding, uh, you're, you're on a run, uh, both in terms of subscriber base and also uh, financials. But do you see this momentum eventually uh, normalizing or slowing, uh, for instance, once this crisis lifts? Or uh, when do you see the, this momentum normalizing? You know, we need, the way I'm seeing it, the Philippines is really uh, still uh, lagged behind among the Asian countries, no? compared to Thailand, compared to Vietnam. If you're talking with first world country we don't we don't discuss that anymore because that's 100 percent penetrated home already in fiber right if yeah. we're talking peers like vietnam and thailand thailand is close to 55 percent home penetration in terms of fiber subscriber in vietnam is close to 60 percent this is our neighbor peers no if you're talking in our country as of today as of this moment we are not even four million subscriber entire country of fiber no so you have more or less 25 million. So we, we're not hitting we're not hitting 20% yet home penetration. So imagine mm -hmm. that gap is very big, no? And the market is really blue ocean to every one operator in the Philippines, yeah. So there's a lot of room to, to yes. grow. Yes. Um, but what about uh, competition? Uh, for instance, I noticed that I recall that Dito Telecommunity uh, plans to launch its own, its own broadband internet service next year. Uh, how does competition uh, figure into your 
plans and how does this affect your goal to cover more than half of households by 2025? Important here is um, you have a better uh, customer experience, you have mm -hmm. a uh, better product, you have better technology. Competition is very really good for the consumer. I will tell you the longest time we, we, we in any country, the better, the more competition, the better for the our public consumer. No, so mm -hmm. if benefiting the uh, and in this uh, compete compete each other, they need to uh, gear up. They need to catch up. They need to upgrade to able to have a proper competition. But in this size of the market in the Philippines, I think it's down the road. Still have a lot of room to do. But how many competitors do you think can your market niche uh, accommodate before it becomes saturated? I think our size is just only targeting home pass of uh, six, 55 to 60 percent. No, but uh, the the we are not. Uh, if you do a home pass on the this market segment, 25 million, 60 percent. That's around 13, 40 million. No. If you're talking with take up rate on that 15, 60 million, 30 to 40 percent, 30 percent, you, you, you can have everything. No? So mm -hmm. there's no such that you can cover the entire market. 30 percent, but you're sizing like one third of the market, like three to four, four million. I, I think that's the doable. No? That's, uh, and you need to leave some space to others also. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, you know, we're, yeah. So there's just a few more months left for this year. And, uh, you know, fourth quarter is usually a good period for companies and for for the economy in general. For you, how different could these final months of this year look like for Converge compared to last year? You know, our businesses depend on the uh, nature also, no? So we are on the field. No? So usually our last quarter is mostly the typhoon months come in like November, mm. early December, that's that happened uh, mm. last year, right? So hopefully yeah. this year we don't have that experience. But uh, in terms of the uh, growth, I think we have the third quarter very strong. Uh, even mm. this month, we uh, we, we, sh we we really shocked because do you know these people, our consumers stay at home and we are locked down at home. You need the minimum 500 gig requirement in the middle homes. If the 500 gig at home, you, your son, your daughter studying online, in your case, you're going to online uh, meeting like this with me, or you have watching uh, Netflix, all these movies, you need a huge capacity. And other technology, I don't think can deliver that except fiber this at this moment. No? So if I'm not down in the home, people are noticed, they are really unhappy what the subscriber and what they are deserved to be, have a better connection. They will ha are climbing and they will uh, rushing to get this connected at home. No? So that's why this month and even last month, is the, I, I will tell you is the biggest uh, demand and uh, we have encountered in terms of the installation and application. Yeah. Yes, it's for homes, but uh, yes. you know, one of the biggest uh, development issues now is the quality of education, especially amid this crisis uh, uh, with so many kids really lock, just locked down at home and we don't know when face-to-face -face classes will be coming back. Uh, what are your thoughts about this issue? I think we are part of the helping the, this uh, education uh, system to our country. We started a pilot with uh, San Juan, uh, Mayor uh, Francis, no? We imagine they have more than 6,000 students and they even they connected to the wireless, they, they have a buffering or it's not stable for the education. We connected them fiber individual homes. Huh? We have piloted this one in uh, San Juan. And we put the LMS, the learning education platform with uh, this uh, system. And turn out this is quite successful. No? After that, uh, Department of Education uh, have uh, with uh, Secretary Leonor and uh, uh, Yusek Pascual. We have signed memorandum agreement to helping the, our uh, public school, which is, I'm started also from public school. So yes. need, need to, uh, this is the future to our generation, the kids need to equip proper education through this uh, technology. 
we are really uh, extend the necessary help to this public school. Uh, in fact, we are helping them to design the whole uh, network to able have their own infrastructure to able to deliver on the future on the uh, uh, by regional of uh, IT in digital infrastructure. Not only that, the country is very unique compared to other country. We have so many islands. We have a lot of schools not reaching by the infrastructure because they are staying in the remote uh, areas. No? So this is a quite important. We need to do some hybrid technology to able deliver the edge computing to deliver on the public school. No? So this, the next we're looking at by hopefully next uh, half of the year by 2022, we might deliver this satellite platform to the remote and individual people not reachable by the infrastructure. They want to have a better high-speed broadband we can deliver to anyone Filipino in this country. But there are particular regions that you're focusing on for that uh, for that push. The, the 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 design. I think they we have helping them to come out with. Uh, uh, they 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 set up already some digital uh, data center already in Subic. In terms mm -hmm. of digital highway, we are we are part of the. Uh, helping them to design the whole zone besides Mindanao network because we have ready digital highway ready and uh, we can share this network to uh, our uh, DepEd to able to use our infrastructure to able to deliver all the 56,000 schools throughout the country. This is quite a challenging project, but this is, this is a huge scale and but it's doable. Important, you should have a long-term plan to able to uplift our education system without the digital highway, I don't think you can achieve our goal. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're now expanding your market reach while also deepening it via more value-added services. Can you just give us a, a sneak preview of such products in the pipeline? And when do you expect to roll out more of these services? You know, the the basic requirement of this value added service is the digital highway, which is what we did no, the longest time. Without this proper uh, correct infrastructure, uh, future proof technology, I don't think you, you will achieve this value added service. No. So basic requirement in the future, I will tell you, is a lot of things coming in already. You see other countries like China, in Singapore, and this e-commerce, shopping online, payment online, uh, fintech online, all just should be have digital highway access to able to access on this. No, our looking for uh, the uh, partner, the, the the product for the home. When you have reaching a certain size of eyeball to to individual homes, you have a, a market. Uh, uh, you can have a market driven to deliver a lot of uh, services to value added to the, our consumers, especially this entertainment, gaming. So all this IoT on the future, yeah. smart homes, uh, home securities, a lot of things can do because as long as you have this the highway is, 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 is made, you bring the highway to individual homes, you bring the light to individual homes. So on top of it, you can do a lot of things on the future. Well, uh, you know, um, one thing that you're passionate about is also the technologies that are behind this business. And, uh, what new technologies out there excite you now? And which ones are you exploring to boost services to your current and also future customers? The, the one to complement to be able to deliver to our Filipino consumer the new technology I'm looking at is the low orbit uh, satellite. No? Because the low orbit, you can have a latency and you have more capacity to able to deliver and you bring the edge computing to the end. No? So this is a future of technology towards to that. So you need to be ready. In fact, the digital highway everywhere in Philippines, you can put anywhere the hub and they can put being up the, up the satellite. So they need this infrastructure to in place to able to complement those who are not viable to bring the fiber to that mountainous area or small islands to able to deliver these things. Even mobility 
like um, that the uh, marinas, the boats, mm -hmm. uh, our patrol, uh, our uh, uh, coast guard patrols, even buses, even airplanes. So all of this is towards to that uh, digitalization direction. Security, everything is is once you ready combination hybrid with this technology, fiber and satellite together. Yeah. Well, how are your talks with, for instance, SpaceX for satellite technology? How's it going? Well, we are. My passion and my aim is to want to this bring this to to our consumer with mm -hmm. them or without them. We will push through on this. No, so the the footprint of the satellite. It's not just only mm -hmm. SpaceX can provide. There's a lot of uh, technology coming out soon, but uh, we are not yet uh, concrete in this uh, partnership. But uh, mm -hmm. in due time, we will. Uh, it's there. We will. Uh, we will publicly be informed. Yeah. We at this moment we don't have yet. Yeah. So you mean there are also other active talks? We have some uh, different uh, technology scouting because mm -hmm. we have a strong team to able to look in other. Uh, solutions yeah you're well, yeah you're talking about a strong team now let's talk about r d see when you founded converge of course you were practically a one-man show when it came to researching technologies out there but right now can you give us an idea of how you are investing in r d which is really at the core of your business yes I really, I've been this tech industry for longest time, no? You know, when I'm young, I'm selling the computer, even the software. One time I'm becoming Sun, micro, my Sun Microsystem distributor and I was bought by Oracle, no? Mm -hmm. So all these people, uh, we have, uh, I have so many subsidiary uh, under, not the outside converts with the mother companies, Comclark. Comclark is a system integration company, no? We, uh, we're doing a lot of integration project with, uh, especially with the government, public sector, even the uh, R&D uh, segment, product development, we have a lot of uh, these young people and really talented and with the guidance of our vendors and uh, the technology also. You know, I grew this uh, technology throughout, through the uh, participation of a lot of uh, international uh, shows. No, I, In fact, mm -hmm. I'm the founding, founding member of uh, FTTH Council Asia Pacific. No? The longest time I'm the member of uh, science, uh, Society Cable Engineer for past 20 plus years. Every year we attending, getting this some technology to able to compare what is happening and what's uh, suitable for our country. No? I've been this for past longest time. So we have a lot of technical people behind me to able to deliver all these new products. So R&D right now uh, accounts for like how much of uh, your, your spending? We are we are spending quite uh, not really that big amount, no, but two mm -hmm. to three percent of my uh, revenue. I think we 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 spend a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. not, not not really big, yeah, but two to three percent should be uh, need need send the, my technical people online, uh, ben, vendor talking with these uh, different uh, providers, and we need we need to link them together, yeah. Okay, we're approaching uh, the final months of 2021. Can you tell us um, what will be different for you in 2022? What factors are you watching out for that could affect your business? For instance, the elections or change of administration. Uh, what factors are you watching out for? For, 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 for the, the 2022, I think the business growing is still there. This is the more uh, infrastructure you're going to build in, is important. The more, the faster you can go to the uh, consumer, go to the ready to serve them is um, better growth for the company. But in political, uh, we don't have any affiliate on this because we just only focus the business. I, uh, I don't want to mix it the politics in the business. We just, our forte is bring this uh, technology to our consumers mm -hmm. that's our main, uh, main 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 focus but what are your biggest risks now uh, what risks do you see down the line uh, and well how are you addressing them or preparing for them the 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 the, the risk we're talking about is the digital transformation because the company is really high growth no so we are we are really uh, 
uh, engage this uh, huge big uh, company to able to transform. Uh, I want to build a uh, uh, sort of like customer experience on the fingertips. Everything mm -hmm. you don't need to chase with us anymore. You just only uh, apps and uh, just inquiry everything. Just only by apps and everything you can access. This should be in place hopefully by first quarter and second quarter of next year. We are mm -hmm. we are partnering with a lot of uh, high uh, tech vendors in Silicon Valley to able bring this happening to our uh, uh, these uh, growth challenges because without this platform at the back, network inventory, uh, innovation, you, you you grow so fast, but back end, you cannot catch up. End of the day, we become a chalk with the, with the services to the customer. So that's why we, this is my focus to able to, to look up to, uh, to able uh, to catch up our fast growth company. Well, if there's one thing, I suppose that this crisis has taught everyone, uh, it's to prepare for you know, so-called black swan disruptions, things that you can har hardly expect. No? Uh, how are you preparing for the unexpected? What has this crisis taught you when it comes to planning? You know, who who can thought this pandemic will strike us, the whole world, and imagine almost two years, and, hmm. uh, and then suddenly you have that demand. You need to decide, you know, I, I learned a lot uh, lesson on this. Imagine that uh, last March, April, May, we not even uh, our bug lag is more than two to three months and customer complaints was very horrible. But uh, finally, you need to stop up, step up to make sure you can quick hiring people, uh, remove the sites to different area because it's new normal to in place. You need to put different sites. Imagine how many two to three months you need to quickly step up number of crews to able to address the bug lags you need to get 400 500 bakers not only 500 bakers you need to have a thousand people to hide on this baker to support to bring down all this sudden sorts of requirement and complaint and service because you cannot access people during the lockdown that's the problem right so we learn a lot of lessons and uh, in fact as of today i'm happy to tell you we are installed our subscriber within a day, almost 60%. Within 30 days, we're reaching 90%. So the customer complaint uh, with multi-channel platform, we replace our C, uh, CXP uh, with by digital. We increase our lines. We increase our multiple uh, channel to able reach the customer to us. So the complaint is subside and almost the complaint, not 100%, but close to 90 plus percent address almost every day so that's happy uh problem but end of the day you need to have a strong uh take up strong decisive decision to able to catch up this uh demand so we said back but we back already in uh, in, in in this video yeah I, I just forgot this point uh one of the big uh, news was that um the government's economic managers are pushed back by about three months, uh, the expectation for the economy to go back to pre-pandemic level. So before uh, before yesterday, they were saying uh, we expect that to happen uh, after the middle of next year. But yesterday, they said that going back to pre-pandemic levels for the economy will, it will take place end of 2022 or even early 2023. Uh, do you share that outlook and how does it affect your planning? I think if, uh, you know, we need to, uh, this pandemic is really uh, uh, un unthinkable. And you, you think, imagine every, we have a subset of the numbers. Suddenly now we are get back all this data variants to strike all these almost highest uh, cases every day, no? So end of the day, we are uh, we should looking how fast we can deliver all this vaccination to our to our people to able to have mm -hmm. uh, heal heal immunity to to able to open up the businesses. You know, the Philippines is uh, we are we are we are looking our biggest uh, contributor is OFW, right? So well, that's one we have outsourcing sector, 
and we have the 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 tourism tourism should be uh, booming coming up but in in, mm -hmm. in in this this pandemic hit us and this trans this air transport everything is closed and knocked down each country is pull out uh, is pulled down our uh, economic mm -hmm. recovery if if this can early finish and uh, we address quickly in terms of this vaccination and we little by little bit open up these businesses and is this uh, is in uh, all all the business open up little by little you know this 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 hit us a lot of sme affected even the even the enterprise no yeah uh, mm -hmm. the fogo is totally almost gone all, no? all this happening with uh, this pandemic no but the, the outsourcing company now is totally changed different uh, landscape is the work from home bring this infrastructure to your home they uh, mm -hmm. with this technology is uh, they able to catch up but the number i think hopefully we can recover by second half of uh, 2020 that's the the the, the earliest the the, the 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 nearest time but if the little bit slight maybe by end of the year 2020 the way i'm seeing it yeah yeah uh, going back to how we began this in 2022. Yeah. No. Uh, going back to how we began this interview, I noted I noted that uh, in one of your reports you described yourself as a challenger brand. Now, your business is one of the fastest growing right now in the country, but there's this uh, observation that uh, innovation starts bogging down as business becomes bigger. Uh, is Converge changing anything? For instance, in the organization, in the way the company does things. Uh, is it good changing anything to make sure that this does not happen as you grow bigger? Yeah, when you're getting bigger, we need to able to adapt the 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 requirement of the size of the organization. No, so mm -hmm. we have a lot of a personal uh, team right now. We have compliance officers, especially mm -hmm. your public company already. You have a lot of uh, sustainability uh, group. You have. Uh, external uh, this is our audit committee to looking with in the uh, processes we are uh, in fact uh, we we lucky enough on uh, we get a lot of talented uh, our officer join us in uh, during this uh, season and during this uh, uh, ipo mm -hmm. season and we become mm -hmm. a public company it's changed the uh, proportionalized the organization is uh, quite uh, I adapt because I'm, you know, I'm, my company is just only from homegrown company. I grew mm -hmm. up this company just on the uh, like a startup, a small. But when you're getting a size already, you need to put the right people to right structure, to proper track on the growth of the company. So we're on the right track at this moment. We, in fact, including our, uh, we have our individual, P, uh, we have our the PR group right now. And like uh, we have uh, investor relationship, uh, the relations, we have all this, all this necessary to able to become a uh, standard or become a uh, corporate, uh, uh, a, a being a public company. Uh, we uh, make sure this is uh, comply and make sure we are catch up to able to maintain our statue of the uh, company for being a public company. But as you grow the organization. Uh... How do you make sure that the spirit of innovation is preserved? The technology you should have. I I I I personally drive that, no? and I have few uh, uh, key uh, consultant to able to track on this uh, new technology innovation. No? So uh, we are we are have few uh, like a core group to able to look what is the good product and be able to adapt to Filipino consumer. Not necessarily new technology, everything can be adapted our consumer because the 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 economic situation compared to first world country and the new and this uh, other country is totally unique. No, In fact, if you talking our Philippines, you can you can identify as is a chassis market, you can see you're not Singapore or in, in, in other country. Yeah. What's prepaid? They don't know. What, what's yeah. chassis? They don't, they don't understand. But mm -hmm. if you're talking in Philippines, we need to think a way how to be adapt the most our 
commu uh, the uh, consumer base no so that not necessarily all the new product or new technology be adapt can be adapted uh, adapt here no? okay so well um, a new administration will be coming in next year uh, are there any regulatory issues or policy policy issues that you would want the next administration to address well i heard they say uh, want to open up the telecom sector liberalize the liberalize to 100 percent for ownership no mm -hmm. i'm 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 just only uh, I, I i i'm not against the investment for the foreign is uh, i 100 percent fine for me but uh, as long as we have reciprocal uh, uh, mm -hmm. country to country make sure if you treat them as open to them they should treat us to open to them also no? that's just if mm -hmm. that's just only respect no to country to country no so that's only i'm i'm uh, appealing to the uh, the uh, our regulators and our uh, our congressmen and senators to be considered that should be uh one of the uh, thought uh, uh, they wish to implement that yeah you're talking about the proposed amendment to the public uh, service yes. act. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's a, it's bogged down in the Senate because um, they're wary of uh, national security issues if you open up too much. Uh, how, how do you view that? That's the views that's of why, the Senate. That's that's why I'm saying this reciprocal. No? So mm. if if you country welcome to foreign investor to to us. And you should open door to them also, right? Why is it mm. one way, you know? Uh, so mm. if they are not welcome us, why we welcome them? We should not welcome them too, right? So mm. this is I'm saying once once they open and they open arm to us, we should open arm to them. That's 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 the the, the way I'm thinking with the business. No, thank you. Well, perhaps to end this uh, conversation, let me let me ask you this question: um, What? to you will be different for your business in a post-pandemic world when it comes? What changes will be permanent for your company as, as a closing statement? Uh, we have more room rapid network expansion in the market are served more extensively to the post-pandemic world. No? We expect that the demand of the broadband continues and even the post-pandemic world, no? And our penetration is still behind the Asian peers that I mentioned a while ago. This is much room to grow and we will not stop until we have the same experience that the first world country experienced, no? This is our Filipino consumer deserve whatever our peers in Asian neighbors deserve and we also deserve that. Thank you very much, Mr. Ui. Thank you, Sir Widi. Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah. That ends our conversation today with Converge founder and CEO, Dennis Anthony Ui. We hope you enjoyed and learned from this dialogue. Stay tuned for more of our events. As Business World turns out, more content that will hopefully add to your arsenal of crisis lessons. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Exclusive world of BPI Preferred, where you are taken care of financially, no matter your preference. You have a relationship manager that knows you and gives you personalized service with priority handling, even over the phone. 
we introduce you to a diverse range of privileged experiences. Feel the care. Feel the privilege. BPI Preferred. What if your every day is easier? What if your tasks are faster? What if you never have to chase due dates ever? What if your life is safer? What if your dreams are higher? What if kaya mo na? GCash gives you secure payments, real-time money transfers, accessible financial services, exclusive deals, and a full suite of business solutions para kaya mo na sumabay sa takbo ng buhay. Kaya mo na to stay connected. Kaya mo na magbayad anytime, anywhere. Kaya mo na magbuy and sell. Kaya mo na to get exclusive deals. Kaya mo na magpera padala. Kaya mo na going safe on future. Kaya mo na abutin ang pangarap. Kaya mo na makatulong, magbigay ng pag-asa. Kaya mo, gigash mo. Sa pagpatak ng ulan, sa pagsubok na dumaraan, may tapang kang harap, lilipat kang may pangarap. Lilipat kang may pangarap. Kailan na'y di mag-iisa, susulong ka ng may kasama, may tapang kang harap, lilipat kang may pangarap. Lilipat kang may pangarap Simula na ng bukas Ngayon na, ngayon na Simula na ng bukas Ngayon na, ngayon na Simula na ng bukas Ngayon na, ngayon na Ngayon na Sampay sa pagbabago Harapin ang bagong mundo Simula na ng bukas Simula na ng bukas ngayon Simple lang kumita kahit nasa bahay ka lang Gamit ang iyong Show My King online franchise business Step 1, you post Step 2, we deliver Step 3, you earn Tandaan, sa Show My King lang yan! Yes, we know there's more to do Bigger things we can do We'll make things happen, you and I Yes, we will All our dreams make the dream QC is pro-business. In QC, we promote. We provide. And we protect businesses. The location of choice for investors and entrepreneurs.